We are insane. As a matter of fact, we have lost our fill in the blank. You can choose a word of your own preference. Now, I do have to acknowledge first and foremost that I am very optimistic about humanity. As a matter of fact, if you look at trends from 100, 200, 500, 1,000 years ago, things have only gotten better and better for civilization overall. I mean, there was a point in time when humans were basically consuming other human beings and not in that type of way. I mean, in the literal sense. And so if you look at where we've gone so far, We've gotten progressively better. Things have gotten better. Technology has been a more of an aid to society and towards our self-actualization. However, I do want to acknowledge the simple fact that in more cases than not, we are still basically insane. And now when I say insane, I'm not meaning the, the crazy that we're used to seeing on TV or maybe on somebody who is, you know, walks the streets and wanders the streets for a living. I'm not talking about that specific crazy. I'm talking about the type of crazy that many of us are pretty much blind to. We're blindsided by, we'd have no sense of, I guess, awareness around in most cases. The type of insanity I'm talking about is the type of insanity that Einstein talked about, which was the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result, right? That type of insanity. The type of insanity I'm talking about is when we do things so backwards and expect things to go right for us, when we do things that have consequences connected to them, yet we do the very opposite. An example is the way in which we eat in modern culture. We eat absolute trash, yet we wonder why we're becoming bigger, more unhealthy, and sicker, right? We just wonder. We, we, we can't fathom how on earth we are not healthy when we are eating literal junk. We are eating trash. We're eating non-food items and expecting ourselves to be healthy in the process. That's the type of insanity I'm talking about. So this message, I really just had to preface this first in order for it to truly make sense, in order for it to really hit home for you, right? I realized that for a majority of my life, I was trying to fit in. I was trying to uh, become a part of the cultural norm, right? I want to be accepted into every peer group, into every circle, into every sort of social atmosphere in order for me to feel worthy. Now, we can get into that one. That's a whole uh, basket and caboodle that has to be unpacked in and of itself. But nevertheless, I was the type of individual who just viewed life as something that I had to figure out in order for me to fit into it. And so I always look for ways to fit into the norm, even though I would see myself as, you know, contrarian, right? I see myself sometimes as a rebel. When I really looked at it, I was just trying to fit into a different group of individuals or a different type of ideology, but I was trying to fit in nonetheless. And so I was truly not living an authentic experience. I was not living an authentic life. And that in and of itself was insane. Insanity is trying to get everybody to like you. Insanity is trying to get everybody to accept you. That is insanity point blank period. And so I found myself in a place where I was running in circles. I was forever tired, forever drained, forever being uh, consumed by social interactions because I was wearing that mask. And to be honest, this is a pretty new discovery I had after watching a video of Patrick Tehan, I believe is his name. He's a dope therapist. My girl had been recommended this individual. And so we watched this together. And he talked about how, you know, social interactions become draining when you continuously wear this mask. And that's something I experienced for more than a decade of my life. I remember uh, very vivid images of me sitting in a circle of individuals and just like putting on this act in order for everybody to accept me and how draining it was and how I'd leave that setting and feel like I'd lost a part of myself for at least the smallest inkling of who I was. And after I did that time and time and time again, I literally could not remember who I was. I didn't know who I was. I just viewed myself as whatever anybody else needed me to be. And so I was looking to fit these social norms quote unquote, the social standards that I viewed as normal. When in reality, that normality I was trying to fit into was insanity. Think about it. If I'm trying to fit in with everybody who's eating this trash, right? Literal trash. It is not food. It is processed junk. It is sold to you as food, but it is not real food. If I was trying to fit into that cultural norm, I would end up sick. I would end up morbidly obese and I would end up probably in a hospital bed somewhere, to be honest with you, right? If I was looking to follow the social norms, I would have a life filled with lack, scarcity, and poverty because that is the social norm. 
what people accept as the norm for themselves is oftentimes broken down, depressed, anxious, resentful, jealous, hate-filled, right? Lacking and void of peace, lacking and voiding of true freedom from within. These are the norms of the society and the culture that we live in. I call this the great age of anxiety. Like they called it the great depression. This is the great anxiety. That is the cultural norm that we are existing in. And so in order for me to fit into that, I literally have to become insane. I have to become the type of individual who's doing things, hoping for a different result, even though the result is pretty straightforward, right? I have to be doing the very same thing, expecting a different result. That is the level of insanity I found myself in. I was eating the junk. I was, you know, consuming trash. I was consuming trash mentally, psychologically. I was continuing to rehash things emotionally that were uh, disempowering me, right? I was buying into a victimhood narrative that was continuously stripping away at my power. I was giving my power away to anybody who would take it free of charge. And so I wonder why I continue to have these life experiences where I felt constrained, where I felt as if I had no sense of autonomy, no sense of power within my own existence. And I believe that was reality. I didn't know I was a powerful being, powerful beyond measure, pressed down and shaken together. I didn't know that I was created by the infinite, the source of all things, and that power was bestowed within me. I did not know this. I thought I was just meant to seek validation, seek a bit of self-worth from what I did for people or how I showed up in people's lives. And so the place that I ended up was in this sort of back and forth or even better analogy. I ended up in this hamster wheel of trying to please everybody around me. And all that happened in that process was I was going in circles and I was getting more and more tired. I was becoming drained within that process. And by the time I completely tired out, I realized that I had gotten nowhere. Yes, I had gotten a little hit of dopamine. Yes, I got uh, maybe a hit or two of self-worthiness in that moment or uh, external validation per se. But in the long term, there was nothing to show for it. In the long term, I was worse off. In the long term, I had bought into an image, an idea, conception of normal, which was truly insanity. And the society that we're living in, in this day and age, is rooted in absolute insanity, backwards thinking, hustling backwards, as they used to say, right? We're doing things expecting one result, which will only give you the very opposite result. We talk about, man, I want a healthy relationship, but we do everything in accordance with a toxic relationship. We feed our mind images, ideas, concepts of toxic relationships then on the other breath, we say that we want beautiful, healthy relationships. How does that work? How does that make sense to you? Please, please make it make sense to me. How are you going to fill your mind with ideas of negative, destructive, and toxic relationships and expect for you to all of a sudden be material for a healthy, positive relationship? How are you going to consume drama and expect a peace-filled life? Now, and, and I'm not shaming, I'm not, I'm not pointing at you like it's just you doing it. I'm talking about me here. I was the one who was living in that space. I was the one who was living in that state of insanity, of expecting something opposite from what I truly was doing. I was, you know, I was expecting to, um, to go in water and not get wet. That was me. And so I'm really here to tell you this and to keep it straightforward, so simple for you, is if you want to be free. If you truly want to exist in a true internal state of freedom, which is that peace, which is that joy, which is the happiness you seek, not the fleeting pleasure, but the true happiness that is from within you. If that is you, the only way you can reach that state of consciousness, reach that state of being and embody that wholeheartedly, completely and absolutely, the only way you can do that is to let go of the norms, the social standards, the status quos, and to grasp onto the authenticity that makes you you. Listen to that inner voice. Take time for that inner voice. Cultivate that relationship with the inner you. Now, I know that may sound close to impossible. It may even sound like a foreign idea to you, but I promise you it is possible. I've seen this for a multitude of my clients, for a multitude of my students, my followers, etc., that if you are willing to implement a process, you can literally live in the most author authority, in the most powerful place, in the most authentic place possible in your life. 
You can live in that personal power instead of living in that people pleasing mentality. And so if you are that person who's not just interested in the change, but somebody who is truly ready for the transformation in your life, I want to extend an invitation to you. Now, I have a very limited calendar as of right now. I got a lot of things going on, but I'm opening up my calendar for one-on-one -on -one consultations for a very select group of individuals. So if you are that person who's committed and you are truly ready to invest within yourself, make sure to go in my description below and book that appointment. Now, again, this is going to scare some people away. Some people are going to look at it and be like, oh, my goodness, that's a lot. Yeah, because I'm not here for information. I'm here for transformation. I'm not here to keep you in the same place and tell you what you want to know. I'm here to tell you what you need and to guide you in those steps in accordance to where you desire to be. And so, again, if that is you, make sure to go into my description below. Click on that Calendly link. Book a time and a date that works for both of us. And let's start breaking through and stepping into that future that you've always desired for yourself. I appreciate you for watching this. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel immediately. Love you guys. Peace.